This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 28th day of July in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Guyana recorded seven new cases of coronavirus today, with six of those cases coming from Arau in Region 7 and the other case from here in Georgetown. In the past four days, 44 new COVID-19 cases were recorded, with the majority of those cases in the interior regions. Today, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Cham Diopersan said the hotspot regions are Region 7 and Region 9. Region 9 currently has 36 active cases, while Region 7 has more than 70 active cases. Region 7 officials have been complaining about the growing number of persons crossing the border with Venezuela into Guyana. They fear the situation will only get worse. Fellow Guyanese, our hotspots continue to be Region 7 and 9, which remains high-risk areas. Today, the majority are coming from Region 7, and yesterday, all the new cases were reported in Region number 9. As you are aware, Upper Takatu, Upper Esequibo region, shares a wide expanse of border with Brazil, where COVID-19 is rampant. Globally, Brazil ranks second after the United States of America and has reported a total of 2,455,905 cases with 88,017 deaths. Dr. Passant called for the cross-border movement to cease, saying too many persons in the bordering communities are putting themselves and their families at risk. Residents, the ministry continue to plead with you to adhere to the health guidelines and to intensify your community action. Village councillors, gatekeepers, and prominent members of the community, your role is to work collectively to ensure compliance with the regulations if you wish to keep down the transmission of the disease. No cross-border movement should be allowed, and any migrant to the community must be immediately reported to the authorities. In the communities too, you have to act responsibly. Your health and safety are at risk. The chief medical officer also said persons need to keep following the safety guidelines and only leave their homes if it is absolutely necessary. I repeat, these simple basic precautions. Only leave home if there is an urgent need. Wearing a mask in public washing hands frequently and practicing social distancing with gatherings no more than 10 persons will protect you from contracting the disease. I wish to issue a word of caution to our parents and guardians who are noticing that children are being affected more and more and deaths among them have been reported globally. So let us protect ourselves and our children. Guyana now has 195 active cases of coronavirus. A total of 181 persons have made full recoveries. More news coming up in just a moment. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. You can prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. If you have the following symptoms, coughing, fever, or difficulty breathing, please stay home. If you don't have these symptoms, then practice social distancing. Avoid crowds. When in a group, keep a distance of at least three feet between yourself and other persons. Please wash your hands with soap regularly or use hand sanitizers. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. GBTI is your Guyanese bank. 
a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Hello, boys and girls. As you prepare to write your exams, there are a few things you will have to do each day so that you and those around you can be safe and healthy. Please remember, on the day of your exam, you must wear a mask correctly, covering your mouth and nose before entering the school compound. Wash your hands with soap and water at the entrance of the school at the sink provided for 20 seconds. Paying attention to the palm and back of your hands, between your fingers and their tips. Dry your hands with a clean tissue and dispose in the closed bin nearby. Boys and girls, your temperature will be tested by an official. Then you will go to the designated waiting area with the floor signs and markings clearly visible, standing or sitting two meters or six feet apart at all times. It is now time to start your exam. The invigilator will direct you to the examination room. All the best. Boys and girls, playing and gathering are not allowed. Parents, the Ministry of Education thanks you for the support you have given the children during during the time at home. However, in the interest of everyone's well-being, you will not be allowed to enter the school compound. Parents and guardians, we are counting on your support in picking up the children promptly after their exam. Remember, the Ministry of Education will provide transport for children who are living far away that require that assistance. Please be reminded that vending outside the school's compound is prohibited. Only authorized canteen vendors with a copy of their food handler certificate and wearing a mask, food gloves, apron, Hair net and a hat will be allowed. Always remember to wear your mask correctly, wash your hands, and stay safe. And let's win the fight against COVID-19. A message from the Ministry of Education. Welcome back. In the first seven months of this year, the Trafficking in Persons Unit of the Social Protection Ministry identified 43 victims of human trafficking in Guyana. All of those persons were non-nationals. In a statement, the Trafficking in Persons Unit explained that it received a total of 22 cases of suspected trafficking, and eight of those cases were confirmed. The majority of the trafficking victims are women, and it is suspected that they are from neighboring Venezuela. Coordinator of the Trafficking in Persons Unit, Tanisha Williams Corbin, said human trafficking remains a problem in Guyana, although the country has been doing better at addressing suspected cases. She said victims of human trafficking are exploited and their basic human rights are violated. The common forms prevalent in Guyana are forced labor, sexual exploitation, and domestic servitude. She added that it is important to engage the community as victims often do not self-identify. Most of the victims never come forward to the authorities, she said. Members of the public are being asked to report any suspicious activities to the Trafficking in Persons 24-hour hotline through telephone numbers 227-4083 or 623-5030. Guyana will be joining the rest of the world in observing the Day Against Trafficking in Persons on the 30th of July. A few weeks ago, it was announced that Guyana continues to rank at Tier 1 in the U.S. State department report on trafficking in persons. Communities across Region 9 have been warned by the regional health officials that they are all at high risk of seeing more cases of coronavirus. As of Monday, Region 9 had recorded a total of 41 cases of the disease, with 36 of those cases still active. The region recorded its first case back in May. On Monday alone, Region 9 recorded 19 new cases. Health officials in the region have indicated that the medical team in the region will continue to do contact tracing and testing also. New samples are to be sent to Georgetown this Friday for testing. The regional health officer has indicated that it is obvious that there is community spread of coronavirus in Region 9. However, other regional officials believe that the high numbers are coming from neighboring Brazil. Brazil has the second highest number of coronavirus cases in the world. Guyana currently has 195 active cases of COVID-19. 
President David Granger is encouraging citizens who might be experiencing signs or symptoms of the coronavirus to seek urgent medical attention. Although they have not been experiencing any symptoms, the President and First Lady on Monday underwent the coronavirus PCR test at their private residence at Pearl. The President said persons need to remember that COVID-19 is a global pandemic with no cure. He said fighting the pandemic requires collective and continuous action by all. The coronavirus cases in Guyana have been climbing steadily since the first case was recorded back in March. Let's tell you now that the National Hydromet Office has issued a flood advisory as there is expected to be severe weather during the course of tonight. According to the weather forecast for the tonight, rainfall will intensify and there will be mostly moderate to heavy showers with a gradual improvement towards the latter end of the period. Rainfall accumulation is anticipated to be between 20 mm and 40 mm. The Hydromet Office says several areas will face thunder showers or heavy downpours with occasional wind gusts before and during those showers. In areas where soil may have already been saturated, there is a risk of flooding. The Hydromet Office also said it will be monitoring the situation and will provide updates during the course of the night and tomorrow. Across the region is coming up next. We give thanks for it. You spend all that money on your watch. How much time you spend with your son? So much money in the club. How much you spend with the ones you love? The simple things are your blessings. Cheese, please. Remember Tara Shiley, this one we aim to please. The musical never ease. Cheese, please. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Howard Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. Are you washing your hands correctly? Here are some tips on when and how to wash your hands. Step 1. Wet your hands with clean water. Step 2. Then apply soap. Step 3. For 10 to 15 seconds, lather your palms together. Always remember to pay attention to your fingers, especially your nails and tips. And don't forget the back and between of your fingers. Step 4. Rinse hands with clean water for about 20 seconds. Step 5. Dry hands with a clean paper towel or tissue. But when should you wash your hands? After using the toilet, before and after eating, preparing or handling uncooked food, after playing with pets or caring for animals, after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose, before and after changing babies or caring for others. Frequent hand washing or using a hand sanitizer with alcohol as an alternative will remove viruses and bacteria from your hands. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHU WHO. Across the region right now, CARICOM countries were on Monday urged to deal with the elephant in the room and put in place strategies that will ensure the financial stability of regional organizations, such as the regional security system as the regional leaders discuss the impact of coronavirus on the Caribbean. The Trinidad and Tobago-based CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security has organized a five-day virtual conference aimed at identifying how the pandemic has impacted criminality and organized crime and the implications 
plans for the future. The event is being held under the theme Securing Our Caribbean Community Within the Era of COVID-19 and Beyond. CARICOM Chairman and St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez told the conference that despite the financial situation brought on by the coronavirus, the regional countries would have been stranded had it not been for the work done by the regional institutions, including the Caribbean Public Health Agency, the Carbon Disaster Emergency Management Agency, among others. He reminded his colleagues that when the pandemic was declared in the region in January, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley had indicated that the antidote to COVID-19 is CARICOM, the regional integration process. In neighboring Brazil, healthcare workers are urging the International Criminal Court in The Hague to investigate President Jair Bolsonaro's government over its handling of the pandemic. A group claiming to represent more than one million healthcare staff has handed over a dossier of evidence to the court. It alleges that the government of Brazil negligence has contributed to the deaths of tens of thousands of people. The government has not responded to the complaint. Mr. Bolsonaro has repeatedly dismissed the virus as a minor threat, ignoring social distancing and calling for lockdown measures to be suspended. But Brazil has recorded nearly 2.5 million cases of coronavirus and is second only to the United States in terms of cases and deaths from COVID-19. And finally, at this time, international news. In Japan, the government is urging people to take working holidays to boost the coronavirus-hit economy. The chief cabinet secretary said ministries would encourage tourist destinations to become more work-friendly, with a new push for Wi-Fi connectivity in hotels and traditional hot spring inns. A government scheme providing financial incentives for domestic holiday makers is already in force in Japan, where borders remain closed to foreign visitors. But critics have pointed to the risk of encouraging people People to move around the country with the number of infections increasing. The tourism sector in Japan had been expecting a boost from the now delayed 2020 Olympic Games. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.